You know, I always say the moment when guests get to walk into a space and go, wow, that means my work has been properly done. Welcome back to the Special Event Rentals podcast. Today is a very special episode. We have the Corey Christopher, the founder of Corey Christopher Designs. Um, welcome, Corey. Thanks for having me today. Oh I'm God. so excited to be here. I am nervous and excited for you to <laughs> oh, be come on. here. We're gonna. This is like it's, just. We're gonna chit. We're gonna chit chat. We're like, gonna talk design. We're gonna make we're things gonna, beautiful. Absolutely. Um, one thing I want everyone to know is. The des- our set design kind of changed today. Corey and Corey came in and set up this beautiful set design that we're speaking at today um, for our podcast. I mean, black and green is in. Like, greenery and black, I think, <laughs> mesh really well together. Well, I wanted something swanky, right? Yes. Like, I wanted that sophisticated touch, a Absolutely. little bit of polish. Don't get me wrong. I love bountiful flowers and sort of a bit more of that feminine feel. But in this case, I wanted to go for something a little more masculine, showing off some of your... Fe- like, my gosh, if your guests got to sit on these couches right now know, the king the king cades are fabulous yes. so comfy like like i think really elevating and i wanted to show something a little bit different right add the king cades throw in some ghost chairs and then just layering right sometimes simplicity is key mm-hmm. in really allowing a story you know which we often talk about when we're designing to come alive and so it doesn't always have to be lots of different things you can actually look at like black on black on black it can be like super modern it can feel sophisticated and it also helps too let's be honest everyone's thinking about the budget a little bit Mm -hmm. affordability is always at the top of mind and so there's fun ways to do that so yeah i wanted to sort of change it up a little bit i love the set last time but i was like how do we infuse it with a little Corey christopher touch and you did just that (laughs) um i love the just going back to the black on black even though it's black on black the dimension is there we have black goblets we have a poly or a hem stitch napkin with velvet and it all quite pops nicely well, so that, that's really well about, done. well, thank you. Yes. And I just wanted to tell people like, it's about texture, yeah. right? Like, so you can have those black on black on black, but if they're all different textures, velvet, we have the hem stitch, the goblet brings a little bit of dimension in. So mm. those are fun ways so that it doesn't fall too flat. Cause if it was all the same texture, it might not have the, the oomph that we would like to see. Well, thank you for doing all of this today. I will be keeping all of the plants that you brought today. <laughs> um, so thank you for that gift, everyone. <laughs> Um, let's dive in. I kind of want to talk just about you first, Corey, and I want to just know about Corey Christopher Designs because I feel like not all couples know or event planners know really what you do best and what you can do. Um, so I want to ask you this question. What defines Corey Christopher Designs? Oh, that's a big question. Isn't it a a loaded question? It's a loaded question. It's loaded. Um, well... Corey Christopher Design um, is about creating beauty in people's lives. First and foremost, I love design. Mm -hmm. I think design can be transformative. I think it can add a glimmer of beauty to people's lives. And something I've really realized more recently is I want people to see they deserve beauty in their lives. And so we get the opportunity through a multitude of different mediums. And I think that's what people don't always get to see, um, that we play in a lot of different mediums and create stories using those mediums. So my background's actually theater and opera. So I've always been intrigued by experience. I've always been intrigued by a personal experience, right? Someone engaging with a space, engaging with a room, engaging with actors or musicians, and what that creates as an experience. And so when I first started studying that, I always had this inkling that I wanted to do something different than just that. It was so temporal, and I wanted to sort of create these moments for people. And that can happen as simple as a beautiful floral arrangement, which we have on the tables, which I think people know of Corey Christopher for our floral design work, and don't get me wrong, I love flowers. The more flowers, the happier I am. But I also like thinking of them more than just flowers, and I like branching off into how we create a space like this. And so we have focused on events, we focused on wedding design, we do have a whole seasonal 
internal division. So we do planters for clients. So their front entrance looks amazing. Um, we do seasonal installations. Um, anybody who knows me knows I'm a Christmas lover. Mm-hmm. Um, I celebrate it 365 days a year. That's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy, but I am but like so I, I'm secretly I like to think that if like you did one of those DNA tests, yes. um, it would be Clausian in descent. Like it say Corey Christopher, like 150 percent Clausian. Um, because I just love it, and I love it for the experience, bringing beauty into people's lives. So we do a lot of amazing holiday work. We get to work at uh, the Fairmont Banff Springs quite often, um, and we've worked at many other properties, creating those moments. So Corey Christopher is about design. It's about really taking design and showing people that it can be beautiful. And of course, there's a luxury element oftentimes to what we create, but we also try to find those moments to bring affordability to people um, and also just allow them a glimpse of what it could be. And I think, you know, Edmonton is often considered a blank canvas and we get the opportunity, you know, hopefully to help paint and show and educate what design can be. Absolutely. And I love everything you said. I think what I think when I think of Corey Christopher, you and... Corey Christopher Designs, I think you tell stories. And I think you tell it through any type of event or home decor or, you know, you were talking about your planters. I know you've had a couple clients that you've done their whole out, like their patio. And totally. again, it's a story. It's not just plants mm-hmm. anymore, like you just said. So I think that is incredible that you guys have created this design home mm-hmm. um, to to help out people in Edmonton, but also you go, you have a lot of work in the mountains, Calgary, Calgary and we Toronto. Were, Toronto, we've been doing some work out in Toronto as well. We've been yeah. in Victoria as well. Um, I like to say we travel. Um, and I think we've become very much known for our logistical management as well. Like we can do installation work. We yes. can do things that, we don't actually know how they'll get done, mm-hmm. but we'll make them happen. And sort of that's where even some of the building is. We've started doing a lot of custom building, right. custom creating, because oftentimes what's in my brain doesn't necessarily exist yet. And that's the exciting part. And that's part of our process is to try to understand how do we create that? Mm-hmm. How do we take elements that may not seem like they should go together and put them together to hopefully create something visually engaging, but also elicit in a response, a feeling. I want people to feel, you know, I always say the moment when guests get to walk into a space and go, wow, that means my work has been properly done. Mm -hmm. That the process of getting there, which is also so exciting and a little chaotic and crazy because I never know how my brain might actually interpret something, but it goes back to storytelling. And if you connect it to the idea of giving people a connection to that design, they're going to feel it, right? And so we always try to balance that idea of, yes, we want it to be beautiful, but I want it to be personal. Um, And something I've really focused on is authentic design that represents our couples or our clients so that when you see that design, you go, that is so them. And that's all that matters at the end of the day um, when we're putting something together. Right. What would kickstart your creative process? Like when we're any type of event for couples or your clients, what, where do you start? That's always, it's so interesting because I don't always have a specific starting point and that's what's so exciting. So usually it starts with some sort of meeting. Um, I really like to get to know who I'm designing for um, because I find when I get those personal little touches that they're not even thinking of. Like they'll be like, oh, I like this restaurant. So then I write that down because I want to go research that restaurant. What did it look like? What did it feel like? My questions are off there. Like they're probably like, what is he asking us? But it's it's getting to know them. So you can then totally do the narrative of this story that you're trying to tell for them. Completely. So then once that meeting's sort of done, then I find inspiration strikes at any point. I could be in the grocery store and looking at the fruit and being like, hmm, look at those pears. That's perfect. Or I could be, you know, even coming into SER. I love if I'm if I'm really hitting a block, I'll be like, maybe I need to just start by pulling things. And so I come over to the DIY station and I just start pulling. I'll pull a charger. I'll pull a napkin. I'll pull a linen. Um, And I'll be like, oh, no, that's not it. Or, oh, that's it's the start of something. Oftentimes, the design will grow out of that. It will not by any means be the initial point. But I'm very tactile. So touching and feeling things is so important. Um, Going for a walk, listening to music. So sometimes if it's a bit more epic and I'm trying to figure out over, like, let's say we're doing a four-day event, Mm -hmm. right? 
what, how does music play into that? How does that create the turnkey for me to be like, oh, I see that vision. Um, and I had one client last year who absolutely loved music. And so listening to songs that they enjoyed gave me the right vibe to hopefully land on what the ultimate design was. I would just love to see the inside of your brain. <laughs> I sounds think scary. It, it, I mean, <laughs> not scary for me. I think it would be like a playground of just like so many ideas and creativity in all aspects. Um, kudos to you. I think you do a really great job at it. Well, thank you very much. Um, I want to kind of go into what part of the design inspires you the most is it floral is it rentals or is it just the whole cohesive design like what inspires you the most out of when you're putting together a rendering or a design concept i think for me it's the whole design because it's when it's all packaged together that it has the impact. The pieces by themselves, it's it's the beauty, right? So we have gorgeous wine glasses on the table, we have a charger, we have cutlery, those are all elements. But it's when they're carefully and thoughtfully woven together because the plate by itself seems like a plate, right? But should it be a black plate? So then it creates drama in the space. How do the florals impact everything? Do you want something lower or larger or taller? And these are all things that are sort of flowing through. So it's about coming up with that cohesive flow. Um, and I find actually the process itself comes very quickly once I've been inspired, and then it's the fine tuning of everything. Um, so it's like when I sort of was being inspired by this, we had a, a cooler full of greenery. So sometimes flowers do provide that initial moment of inspiration. Yeah. Um, and so I saw the like trick greenery and I was like, oh, I do love greenery. And then I was like, well, if I was gonna have a swanky party, what would my swanky party look like? I don't get time to have a party very often. So like, let's have a party. And so that's how that came yeah, together. Builds. Right? This builds. Yes. But then I knew that like for the greenery, greenery to stand out enough it would need to be everything else would need to be subtle but dramatic right so the black on black on black um yeah so that's sort of how that would happen right. and i love all of those points because i couples and clients as much as they have a like a direction they want to go in they don't think of all of that and i think all of those points that you just said are very important when thinking about design that's why obviously yeah. they come to us for that but there's not many people when I'm like, oh, should that be higher or lower or high or low? And they're like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm like, no, that's a mm. that is a big decision. Yeah. We got to hum and ho like hum and haw over that for a couple seconds. Well, and going off of that, I think this is always a really interesting question I ask. Tall center pieces versus short center pieces. Because if you have a conversation and they're like, I want something intimate, I want to be able to have a conversation. That is the key word for me. Then if I'm going to do tall, it either needs to be suspended over the table or it has to be so thin because I don't want to infringe on conversation, right? So that informs the design more than necessarily let's make it tall, let's make it short, right? Or do they want a tree, which we like to put on tables occasionally, um, because you want to feel connected and and like you're underneath something. We forget how much elements can really play to enhancing a space. Um, and it's something I find couples won't don't always think about. Your venue is crucial in helping any design come to life to tell the story. And if you, you know, it's why sometimes the ballroom is perfect but an outdoor tent is more perfect, right? And knowing that um, is really helpful to make sure that your story can be communicated and not be as costly. Because sometimes we've been told, oh, we're in this room, and I'm like, hmm, okay. How you want this story, you want this visual in that space. Oh, I like a good challenge. We also need to up the decor budget because I need to create a few important moments and focal points to communicate that. Absolutely. I want to go back to the high and low center pieces. Okay. Does it matter? And here's what <laughs> I, here's, I, you're at a six foot round table, yeah. the ECC let's take, or the Fairmont. Yeah. Are we really talking to the people across the table from us? Is it important to see, is it important to actually have that conversation, like a low center piece or a tall skinny one to have those conversations across the table? Is but it important? I think it can be, particularly if people are traveling. So think about it, Great right? Point. Like, like 
how often does this group of people see each other? Mm -hmm. Because, and that may seem so, it seems like such a small detail, but so important. Because normally it wouldn't matter. Like, I like height because it can allow the space to come alive if we're looking to create visual interest in a space that maybe is a little boring or doesn't have a lot of um, architectural interest. Um, I always make the joke too, like I had one client who was like, I want a big centerpiece because um, Aunt Josie, I don't want to talk to Aunt Josie. And I was like, well, poor Aunt Josie. But like, you know, sometimes you want to create that feeling. It doesn't matter because what I would say then is if conversation's that important, that's a very different wedding we're designing, then let's say I want to wow every single guest and blow them away. Right. Well, we're going to blow them away, then we need the biggest centerpiece you can imagine on that table to create that moment. Yeah, and I love that because I feel like there's music going on. If conversation is not what you want at your table or yeah. what you really want at the wedding, more intimate, mm-hmm. like you have so much going on. That's why I asked the question, does it matter? Because it might matter to the couple, but or it might not matter to the couple, but it matters to mom and dad or either side of the family because they want that conversation or they're stuck in a time where it was all low centerpieces. Well, and I think you bring up a great comment about who are the key stakeholders and whose That's opinion matters. That's a great ma- way to put it, Corey. <laughs> and whose opinions yes, matter. Absolutely. Because it's people are always like, well, why do you care if if moms let let's let's talk about who's paying for the wedding? There's that initially, which is fair. They have a vested interest, and usually it's for the best, right? They want to make that day so special for their son, their daughter, whoever is getting married. So I think that's really important. But Maybe they, they it, like the the bride, let's say, really cares what mom thinks. I need to understand that relationship. I'm then the psychologist. I grab the couch. We have some chats. I know several of my meetings are not going to talk about design at all. We're going to talk about how everybody interacts. And that's why key stakeholders are important. And I often ask our couples to define that at the very beginning because it's important to know. And when I don't know, I'm not making the best decisions for the couple because I don't know who they're also contending with in that process I think yeah I (laughs) it's important it's so important I've been stuck (laughs) in a in a situation where you know I'm dealing with the couple we have everything fleshed out and then mom comes in (laughs) with her credit card or whatever and it's a game changer it is like no not that she's taking over but she does have a say the the bride uh, the bride or groom or couples bring them in for a reason they're not here just for the fun of it. So I think it is super important to know who those people are. It is, and then it helps inform the process, which designing is a process, right? Rarely are we able to like hit it out of the park on the first go, not because it isn't a great idea, because it's meant to be refined. It's meant to be thought about. And and the ultimate decision is our clients. We just are putting our best ideas forward for them to hopefully make some selections. Because rarely will you have a client, and we've had a couple, who say, we trust you, you get us, make it happen. Those are amazing and actually a little more scary than anything else because they trust you so much that you got to really dig through the psychology of figuring that out. That's why I think design is such an interesting thing to deal with when, sure, there's times where you are just going to put a centerpiece on the table, but normally our clients hope, and I would hope they would want more from us. I love that. Let's talk, we talked at the beginning of this about storytelling, and I want to talk about how each table can tell a story. How do we bring that to life on each table? So let's dive in. I want to talk about DIY um, couples. I want to talk about couples that hire you and how we how we can really ev- um, elevate their tabletop decor. Because I think nowadays that is... The like, and we were talking about this. I was talking about this with Lars the last episode. The evolution of events has come so far. We go to the Fairmont with gold cutlery now, like that's crazy. So I think tabletop decor or tablescaping is a huge part of like a wedding or an event. So let's start with where do you want to start? You want to start DIY? You want to start with? Well, let's start with the DIY concept because I think it's important. And what I say is thinking and planning is your friend. Now, I know everyone's got a Pinterest board out there, right? Every single person. Um, I use them as a collecting tool Mm -hmm. because I think having a lot of inspiration, it's more important to figure out what you don't like. 
Everyone's like, oh, I have a board. This is what I like. I'm like, I want to know what you don't like because you might not fully understand why that's working in there. And I want to be able to share that with you. Um, I think the important thing, you're right. Tables, if, if nothing else in a space, a table can be a very meaningful visual right? It does tell the story. Um, and I'm going to use a uh, wedding we did a couple years ago, because I think it sort of plays off of a little bit of this style, but also had a couple different versions of it. So when I met with the client, um, they said, we want our wedding to feel like Macbeth meets Alexander McQueen meets A Midsummer Night's Dream. Now for <laughs> a theater major, this is heaven. Um, and so how, how am I going to bring that to life? So my brain just starts going, right? So black velvet linen. You guys helped us source this. It was fabulous. But we also did green, hunter green velvet linen. And then we did hunter green draping. The idea of a theater, right? That's this idea of Macbeth. Um, the tablescapes used books. So behind us, we have books, right? I love finding those elements. So how does this pertain to a DIY client? I think you got to write down what you really like. I think you also need to think, what is your priority list? People forget this when they're, they want everything. Most people can't have everything and that's okay. You don't need everything. Mm -hmm. But what you do need is to know what matters. So for instance, is food service really important? And how is the food being served? This is important to figure out before you do your tablescape. Because sometimes I know Corey puts a lot too many things on the table and then family style comes to the table and I'm like, did you put an extra table out? Because that's not going on the table. So knowing that food matters and that it's going to be family style is so crucial. Maybe I need a six foot round instead of a five foot round. So really defining those very key components. Do you like flowers? Maybe you're not a flower lover, but you love candles and you love light. And so what can that be then? Well, maybe it's a lantern on the table, right? So you see how asking yourself these questions. I think for DIY, you need to find someone who can ask you these questions. It's it's hard to sit there, you know, even we worked on your wedding a little bit, yeah. just chatting, like, what do you want? What do you want it to feel like? Because you just need a guide. You need a guide and you also need to think of what's manageable because you can get, <laughs> any, any yeah. couple can get out of hand with even hiring someone or DIY. Yeah. Like you can take on so much where you also end up falling short and it's kind of like a, mm -hmm. a sore spot. Well, it's, so I think exactly ask the right questions, but yeah, see what's manageable as well. See what's manageable and then start to figure out, let yourself dream. Too often people get caught up in getting an answer right away. My fabulous couples who are a type, they want the list. They want everything done. And I'm like, design is a process. It's creative. Sometimes I get inspired within the first hour. Sometimes it's two months. And I'm like, like, you know, scooping the ice cream out of the pail, trying to be like, what's next? How, what am I missing? So give yourself time to dream. So take that Pinterest board and dream. And don't be limited because something is in the wrong color scheme or something doesn't seem right. Just know why you picked it. And that's why that comment section sometimes is great. Write why you liked it and let it percolate. Because too often we rush into the decision making and then that will mean that you don't actually love it as much. You're just making a quick choice. And so I think that's important um, as you're taking that journey of design, right? And that's part of my journey too um, in taking that. And back to like finding that confidant, you want someone who's gonna tell you when it's gonna look bad, but also you just want someone to continue to ask you the questions so you can get to the answers that you need to make those selections. I love that. I think DIY brides are, they amaze me. They really do. Yeah. When they pull it off and you have <laughs> all of these like different, you know, personalizations, it makes for such an amazing wedding or a design. So good luck to all those <laughs> DIY brides out there. Well, and just off of that, also the process of doing it, right? Like that's a you, it, that's a memory, right? And I think we we don't give enough credit to the process, to the doing, to the to the bridesmaids nights or the groomsmen's nights yeah. of creating and making things that are then going to be used. And those personal touches are important. There's, you know, some of the most beautiful weddings actually seem void of any personality whatsoever. Those ones make me sad because I'm like, "Oh, just one more step." A and missed opportunity. Missed almost. opportunity, yes. right? Especially when you are investing. Weddings, 
events, they're investments. So we have to think about how we're taking that those funds and investing it. Um, that's why I never like the word budget. I think because it suggests that we're going to have to nickel and dime to get somewhere. Um, we have to make decisions about where we're investing what you have. On the topic of budgets, do you need a budget though? Like when people are coming into you, um, when you just say you don't like the word budget, how do you get a sense of what they're willing to spend and what how, what direction they want to go with? Because well, I think budget is important. I need to know. Oh. I need to know something to deliver. So what I do with the budget is I ask for a range, because I feel like it's a little more comfortable, right? Like, but then people will be like. Let, we want to see. So then I'm like, you want to spend a million dollars on flowers? No, 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 no. Okay. So, well, then so maybe we don't want to see. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe we don't want to see. So then I, because I want to gauge. What we've started doing is with each of our proposals. So when we're designing, if we're going to be taking on a client, we create a proposal that outlines our services. And then I'll put together what I think you need as a budget range. Because that really gets the conversation started because sometimes people simply do not know and they've never planned a wedding before or they had a friend do it or they did it five years ago unfortunately things have gone up in price and there is a bit more increase so you got to be aware of those things and so what i try to do is we try to put that range together and then we say what i always say we do not need to spend this much, but for what you've told me and what I think you want, we're going to fall around here. Oh, that's a little bit outside of that. Not a problem. Let's go back to our priority list and let's have some discussions. For me, that's that's me guiding them through it rather than just, oh, well, you don't have that, then we can't do anything. No, we can, but there'll have to be some sacrifices and there'll have to be a refocus of things. Budget is important though. And I think to not have a number there's very few clients, I think, who can truly have no number. Um, and even with them, they have a ceiling. There is a ceiling. And so I think being honest with yourself, right? You know, like having those challenge, it's a difficult conversation anytime money is involved. Um, but I think it's important when you're working with professionals, whether that be a wedding planner, a designer, the event company, know where you're comfortable and don't feel you're embarrassed by that, but just know because it makes our life a little more challenging because we want to, we want to do the best for you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to suggest a chair that is $25 when I can find a fabulous folding chair. I love the acrylic one. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites because it looks really good. It's an elevation from what people use. Yes. It's a little bit more than the Walnut, but like, let's be honest, if you need a good ceremony chair, the Walnut folding chair is my favorite it's so because good. it feels like a great country yes. wedding or it can be elevated to mid century modern, but like you can still have a beautiful chair. So like there are options, but knowing that I hate when we think we have a budget, I pitch an idea that I'm so excited about and then recognize that that's too far out. Right. Um, and I just never like creating that. So that's why those budget conversations and like outlining it are really important for our design process with our clients. Yeah. And I would love to tell like couples don't, just give us the budget. I feel like that's not, <laughs> skirt, don't skirt around yeah, it. Don't, don't, skirt, yeah. don't be embarrassed by it because exactly like you said, when we have that number, we can give you the best output. But if we don't, then we overachieve or under deliver and it just kind of creates a little bit of a mess. Mm -hmm. Or again, we have to just refocus. And, and that's going to happen at times. And you know, there are times where there's an infusion of money, something's happened. A, a budget is a very organic element. Um, but yeah, just be okay with knowing where you're okay and comfortable at mm -hmm. um, and sharing that. Um, you know, I always say, I'm not just here to spend your money because if I was, then I would do these five things, but I'm here to give you an experience. Hopefully from the moment you engage our, our services until the very last day when we are putting it all together oh, and afterwards. Absolutely. Uh, now that we're on the topic of budget or just mm -hmm. money, what, um, what would be your biggest bang for your buck? Like, what would you, maybe in terms of rentals, what would be, what would you want us, the couples to spend their money on? What is the biggest impact for you? I know in our first episode, we were talking, I think chairs is a great impact. 
I think especially if your numbers are, I'd say between 100 and 200. I understand where once you verge into 250, 300, it can be a challenge if the venue doesn't have a chair already. Um, But we're doing a fabulous wedding where it already has an established chair the gold shivari quintessential lovely simple but we're elevating a certain amount of tables i've i've taken some budget being like no i think we can create some beautiful moments and so we're going to accentuate with a couple different chairs we're going to use the louis chair um which is beautiful i love the padding on the back because again elevation detail but guess what we're actually only going to use about i think it's 50 of those chairs so in, a, in for you know a good size wedding that's okay and then we're going to use some ghost chairs so we're sort of going through that middle step so like again if your budget you can't have all the louis cuz i think they are a little bit more of an investment that's okay we can be thoughtful about it so chairs i think are really really a huge component i think linens are important as well and again there's different levels of what that linen needs to be i love a good majestic it adds a pop of color it adds a little bit of visual interest which i think is really helpful because it has that texture to it um but then if you want to go to the next level maybe you want to go velvet because i love a velvet um who i think doesn't? who doesn't but then again it's so fun to touch it's the so table fun to your right? guests, and, and it then a little bit like of light guests. on it so again how does that react to the light now let's say you're a little more budget conscious just make sure the linen hits the ground because there's nothing worse than walking to a space and you can get a simple poly. It might not have the sheen, but what maybe, maybe you're going to spend a little bit more on that floral centerpiece, right? So in that case, it's about knowing where to spend and knowing where to save. If your venue has great cutlery, then you don't necessarily need to bring in cutlery. You know, I, I do, this is the Vera, right? I just want to, yeah, it's the the Vera. Vera, like beautiful gold and black sleek and modern. But maybe you don't, that your design doesn't need that per se, and then you can save a little bit, right? Mm. Um, chargers are nice because they allow the place setting to be weighted, which I think is very helpful when very you're designing. Um, so I think that's another place that I would like look at, you know, splurging a bit. Um, a goblet and keeping everything. So again, on this table, adding that little bit of texture with the smoked goblet was a great choice, but kept the wine glasses simple. Mm-hmm. Well, it just broke the it broke up the glass a little bit. It right. just gave it dimension and texture, and we already have so much texture going on. So, great choice. Yeah, and then then goes a, a long way. Y- a simple <laughs> goblet can really transform a table. Yeah, so so you could maybe the and venue pick up on your theme totally. And if a venue just has sort of I don't want to say the generic cutlery and glassware, but if they do, that's again a way to infuse your theme, your storytelling moments. And the other thing too, if we're just sort of taking a moment to go outside of the tablescape a little bit, where can we focus? I think instead of dressing a whole room, make an impact. Whether that's a beautiful arch, whether it's, you know, a gorgeous, you know, let's say a a buffet table that you want to dress up. Those are moments that get forgotten, but can have a lot of impact. Um, So don't again feel that you have to do everything to the same level. Every table does not need to be that. Um, You can elevate and play with it in the room and it'll give more impact. And I love the the statement pieces that you were kind of talking about. I think fo- like when you're a guest and you're entering a room, having a statement piece that everyone can focus on or that like, that wow factor, and then they look around and they see everything else is a great idea to have. Whether that be your arch, whether that be an, a draped entrance way mm-hmm. or anything like that, I think it, again, creates that story that you were telling. It creates that experience Um so I, I love all of that. Well, and another one that just popped into my head, and I can't believe I didn't say it earlier, bars oh. and bar backs. Hello. Um, what a great way to create a moment because people are going to go up to the bar to get a drink. You can vinyl them. You can deckel them. They're the amount of things you can do with a bar if, if you're bringing it in or utilizing big arrangement on the bar. Again, it's a focal don't let it just be passive, right? And so I think looking at those things you're already going to need, you might already having to be investing in, how does that then pull everything together? And I think it's a great, the bar especially is a great way to achieve a cohesive look. Um, I think it brings in different elements from the tabletop. It brings in, you know, that statement piece. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really, 
it's a great way to bring that cohesiveness, but also that could also be your statement. Like you were just saying, like that can be your wow factor. If you do have a party or you, that's the vibe you're going Mm -hmm. for is a very, you know, cocktails and party vibe. I think a bar and a lounge is a great thing to introduce if you're able to completely. And I think again, like maybe that's maybe the case is we don't have a huge floral budget. So you're going to do candles on all the tables to create that ambient light, but you're going to spend like a good six to $700 on a wow statement bar piece people will remember that bar piece. They might Won't not they ever. because you wouldn't be able to split that amongst all the other tables yeah. to get the same impact repetition. Very important in a space. Um, so those are just things like I think I hopefully people can see, wow, I just need to think a little outside the box or outside the norm of what I think it needs to be. Um, and that you can still have a really beautiful we- wedding um, without having to constantly go over budget. I love that. And I love having the personalized touches to all of those. I think it tells your, the couple's story. Um, so bars people, that's where the, yep. that's <laughs> where we need to put all the money. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's just, it's a fun and impactful yep. way for sure. I want to kind of pick your brain about, I always recommend this, but the different tablescapes within one design. So maybe changing up the linens or changing up the centerpieces, going, uh, you know, having some recs and rounds. What are your thoughts and takes on all of that? Well, I love mixing rounds and rectangles um, because I think that is very impactful in a space, especially because it breaks up the floor plan. um, And depending on how many tables you have, it really might be absolutely necessary. What it does, it also creates cool visual lines um so again if you're using let's say a harvest table i love a good harvest table um a little heavy to move but you know hey that's why we're the design logistics studio and we got some fabulous some team. muscles yeah some muscles to deliver those but then i can put something substantial on that table but maybe i only need four of them right so i'll do a lot of doodling oh my god the amount of sketches i have because i'll put like tables here a little rectangle there i'll move one there i'm trying to think of how to engage the space differently i don't want it to look like everything else so i think floor plan is really important break it up okay let's say we can't add in rectangles whether it's the venue etc rounds look at clustering you know i know a lot of time you'll go it'll become a polka dotted mess i'll be honest you know black white black white well no why don't you cluster a whole row of black and everything else white so be visually impactful with what you can do and create and so that's changing up the linen color you know maybe i probably wouldn't unless you're about to have a susian party um you know dr seuss which would be a fabulous wedding and i'd be happy to design that one um i think maybe not not every color, keep it to one, maybe two, possibly three, but you don't want to go too far. And I always say, you know, and this is part of our process at the beginning, we create a color spectrum. Um, you know, everyone's like, what I was watching the first episode and enjoying along and we were talking about what, what are your colors, right? Well, I remember in the, when I first got into the industry, everyone wanted a hot pink and a black wedding. Glad those days are gone. Uh, Do Do you remember the teal and brown? No, I tried to block it from my memory, uh, Caitlin, because that was a lot for me. Uh, and, pur- and purple has never left, by the way. Purple no, it's always is there. Always it's, there. It's the regal aubergine. Yes. Um, no, but I think what's so interesting about that is, okay, let's take black and hot pink for a moment. Let's expand that out. So you could add a navy blue to it. You could add a blush pink. You could add a dusty rose. You could add white, ivory, and some gold. Now I have a spectrum. What's so great about a spectrum, especially if you're doing it yourself, is it allows you more versatility to play with elements. So for instance, I can't find the perfect shade for that vase, but guess what? It's close enough that we can play to the next tone. Or with flowers, for instance, Mother Nature grows the flowers. As much as I can control the color, I can't control the shade. So that one pink might be a little brighter than I want it to be, but with a proper spectrum, it will still play nicely. So it just allows you that ability, especially in a space, to play with a little bit more. Um, And so don't be afraid of then incorporating that into the linens, right? So that you could have three different types. Or maybe it's about the sheen. Maybe it's not even about changing the color. It's about, okay, we're going to do a black velvet. 
we're actually going to bring in some some black signature simple easy very affordable you know if we if we don't have a lot of budget do a black signature and then maybe let's throw in the majestic now we have three different tones of black and as long as it looks intentional what you're doing that's the biggest thing intentionality is so important um it's going to sing in the space yeah, and I love the word, or I don't love the word, but don't be afraid. No. I think design is is incredible and what you can kind of piece together. And don't shy away from what you think is out of the norm. Just go for it. And again, everything can now, everything will just fall into place. You can remove, you can add. There, just don't be afraid. I think that's a great idea and and necessary, right? Mm-hmm. Like true. It ta- like I've been in the industry, I think it's 13, 14 years now. So it takes time to build up that muscle, right? You know, 10,000 hours of doing. Um, but don't also stop yourself because you think someone has an opinion. Or, or you get overwhelmed. I yeah. think of couples that come in the door and there's just <laughs> so much. Well, there's a lot of options you know, here at Special lot- Event Rentals. <laughs> there's a lot. Do you know but- how many napkins you have on that wall? I remember the I first you, time I was like, what? this is a lot of nap. What do I want a poly? Do I want a velvet? Do I want like, I totally get um, it. it. It was overwhelming for someone who would, I'd like to say has a little design experience. <laughs> yeah, and, and so I think that can also just don't be afraid to come in. You, you don't have to know. You really don't have to know. You can just have, you know, your Pinterest board and you can start pulling, but Everything can be curated and it will it will come together lovely. Well, and that's and that's the exciting part, mm-hmm. right? And that's why you come to, you know, and I think the thing is too, people are scared, oh, I can't afford professionals, but there's times to engage professionals. I know many wedding planners and wedding designers have like a little like little package that allows you a couple hours of brainstorming. Sometimes it's just to sift through the ideas so that then you can let you can be like, I just needed someone to confirm I was right or wrong, and we they can do that for them, right? even coming in and talking with your staff I'm sure they get some direction which is so helpful yeah and it like you kind of said a little bit back it is an investment so every decision is emotional it is not just picking a different cutlery for your table you're investing in that and it's not sometimes cheap so (laughs) do you know what I mean like you want to make sure that it's the right decision for you and it will be executed perfectly and it will be everything you wanted so there's a lot of stress there and (laughs) Yeah, there's lots surrounding that topic as well. <laughs> no, but I love that, right? And I think that's the exciting part. So yeah, let's not be afraid to try things, to yeah. be a little bit different. Um, you know, I like to, something I've been sort of phrasing a bit more when I've been thinking about our weddings is, you know, yes, you look at our weddings, they are luxury, but they're personalized and they're authentic. And anyone can have an authentic wedding. And if that means you're going to have a barbecue in the backyard with fabulous like flannel tablecloths and like chopped wood then you know what that day is probably going to be more meaningful to you than a lot of couples because they get afraid or they go with what they think they want or what someone else wants for them Um, and that's why I think it's important to figure out what you want I love that Great. I, I hope everyone that's listening and is like soaking this up because I'm learning so much. Um, and I have been in this industry with you for almost 11 years now. Yes. You know, it goes back that far. I was thinking this morning when you were coming on the show, I was like, how long have I known Corey? Oh my and gosh, that's a long 11, time. I was like, no, it can't Few be 11. Hairs now, but you know, that's okay. <laughs> well, I have many great hairs, so I'll take well, your few. Okay. Um, I want to talk about personalization and where to kind of put it where I want to talk specifically about tabletop decor. Um, back in, I remember when I first started, I think a lot of people personalized their tabletop decor with favors. Yes. Big bulky flavors that were on the table and it had their colors. It had their names. I see in front of me today that, you know, you have a little leaf. In yeah. the napkin. So, and I've seen some people write mm-hmm. names on the leaves. I think that's a really great way to personalize, but I want to kind of hear from you. Where would you start personalizing tabletop decor? Well, there's a couple different places. Mm-hmm. The first one that seems the most obvious is actually stationary because It's often overlooked because it's the last thing to be done, but it has the most impact. Um, And that's 
you know, to say a menu, for instance. Maybe if you're an art lover, you know, it's splattered with colorful paintbrush strokes. Or maybe it's how you lay it out, right? Like maybe your favorite restaurant. And I get I get that no one else is going to know this, but I love when there's like these little moments that only the couple and their closest, closest friends will know. But maybe it's how that menu is laid out and it's a replica or very consistent to a place they like to go. The place card, is it a leaf? Is it on a box? Is it a flower, your favorite flower that's then tied? Um, Is it a mountain range that we had designed for one client because they love the mountain so much? So each place setting was a mountain with their name calligraphied on. It's such an easy way to add personal touches, right? Um, I remember, oh, probably when I first started out, I had a client who loved Spain, absolutely loved it and Corey Christopher was so excited to do (laughs) art projects and DIYs that I made all of the vases maps of Spain and then it was filled with all these beautiful red flowers like how above and beyond above and beyond but so memorable Mm -hmm. right so that was a simple thing instead of using a vase that would look nice, I thought, how can I incorporate that in? Um, And so I've become more aware of how to do that as well. You know, you mentioned favors. We're seeing, you know, maybe not as many favors. It is a costly investment at times. Um, We had one client who loved candles. And so I, and and they're they're just such homebodies that I was like, wouldn't it be amazing if all of the guests got a candle? Mm -hmm. And so that was on the escort wall and then they would bring, like, so how do those elements happen? You know, you're guest book we've done several where it's like they're signing a mountain range or they're signed i love one of my favorite things is find a beautiful book that you love but maybe even a cooking book if you're a foodie and then they can like circle a favorite recipe or leave you a little message again how do you create that's even creating going personal more because you're engaging your guests a little bit Mm -hmm. um so thinking of those little ways are very simple ways to do it you know maybe it's you know, one time we put ferns on a table and then we had a whole bunch of rocks that they had they had collected from the beach where they had met. You know, again, yeah. like I'm always trying to find those meaningful moments that really take it to the next level above and beyond. Um, back to you were just touching on favors. I in my last episode, we were talking about favors and how they're not on the tables, but they are on there. It's like a statement piece now. Totally. Escort wall, back bars. It is something that you grab and go. Which We've I, seen much more of that. Which is great because I think it, it becomes a challenge sometimes. But again, how do I create a moment? I think one of our couples had done golf balls. So I created like little, I, I got some, I got great. some. These are awesome. I, I want to see all these photos. Yeah, right? Where are they? Um, that's a good one. Well, we can talk to our mo- marketing department that's a little behind on posting everything. Um, it's hard to share, yes. right? Because we get so involved in what we're doing. But like I took artificial turf and then I had a whole bunch of the teas. And for me, you're right. That's a great idea. It flipped the guest book, which was out in the hall. It it needed something, you know. And so for one of our other clients, we did a welcome sign that was actually uh, an illustration of the mountain range where they went hiking, you know, and something that they can frame and keep. So it's about, yeah, how can you personalize it? How do you make it special? You know, maybe you if it's a smaller gathering, perhaps it's napkins and you want to have a monogram put on it. You know, like there, you know, you can go to the next level on a lot of it. And so I think, what are those ways that are meaningful and impactful? Um, So stationary being probably one of the key areas that they can achieve that. And stationary has come a long way. It has. You can do (laughs) anything with stationary. I think you can match color. So I think it's a great way to personalize and just add those missing touches, maybe on the bars or, you know, just signage throughout the whole entire. Completely. The event. So yeah, I, Corey, these are just great <laughs> tips and tricks. I want to know what trends you you see mm. coming. What what do you see up and coming? You know, this is always an interesting question because one thing I've realized is I actually buck the trends a lot. And the reason I do is because it's not about the trend for me, mm. because it's about the client. Right. But things that I'm seeing, um, I think intimacy is important. I think that started with COVID. So we're still seeing big weddings, but we're seeing a little more thought put into the wedding and who is going to be there and why are those people there? Um, And it relates to design and it doesn't in the the sense that 
we're able to do more if the budget is there because we're not worrying about just filling tables with things. Um, I'm loving interesting ceremonies. I think um, private ceremonies. We're seeing a lot of our couples actually have a very private moment where they get married first and then they go do their ceremony and they say vows and stuff. But that moment gets to be so special because there is only like usually it's just them um the officiant and us hiding in the bushes just to make sure everything goes well um so i think seeing that as well um i love mixing and matching and so i think depending on style of course that's going to play if it's more modern we do need to be you know about consistency but like we did a, a few ceremonies of the past couple of years where we're mixing chairs we're mixing the seating options some people are standing at cocktail tables i think it's not necessarily about what's trending but it's about what feels comfortable right florals are a lot more moundy which is really nice because i love when there's like collections of blooms rather than you know just one or two types or like more free flow so that's sort of fun to see i think sculpture is very interesting and we've started doing a lot of installation work whether that be ceiling based whether we're doing interesting walls so again creating that focal point so you may again not be putting tons of flowers everywhere but there's one floral or greenery element of course greenery being here um that sort of comes alive right and then i think lounge right we're seeing the traditional sit down at a dinner table concept move we're not seeing it happen as much um so we're seeing people move to cocktail you know taking all this fabulous lounge furniture that we've been sitting on and enjoying like it's our home i see a lot of people taking their home and wanting to have a big party um backyard parties we're doing a whole bunch of them private estates so again it's it, it these are trends we're seeing you know i could talk about well specifically we're seeing sage green take over from emerald green yeah, well that is <laughs> which is which is fair but again what if you don't don't like sage green right so i think i'm always mindful that a trend at times may come and go um so what i like to look for things that are more timeless that are usable across many different sort of designs overall well said i <laughs> i think it like when i say trends i do go to sage green napkins or bo- i do but it's, <laughs> right yeah it, totally what you just told me it just opened up so many more like avenues and i think yeah that was well said like well do you yeah do Cut. you and yeah you can you can pick up on the trends because i think everyone has pinterest and mm-hmm. um but you can personalize those trends you can make it your mm-hmm. own and just as special without yeah. being the norm yeah and i think the unfortunate thing with trends too particularly on pinterest is we see the best of the best and don't get me wrong i want the best for everybody but like lately some of the floral installations are so massive i'm like that's fifty thousand dollars worth of flowers um but we can do something really cool that emulates that or pulls inspiration from that so again use that as inspiration but don't necessarily go in with the idea (laughs) that that is all achievable unless there's a certain investment involved. So I think that's important just to be mindful. You can still be trendy. You can still be contemporary. You can still be modern. Um, You know, all of those words somewhat get sort of intertwined, um, but you can take inspiration from it as well. Like you were saying. Yeah, absolutely. I know that we, like your company, SER, we've always worked well together, but I think that that is something couples should be aware of, but also event planners, I think they need to have a connection with their rental provider. I think it's important. I think um, it's nice to, you know, bounce ideas off of. What would you say, what are some tips when walking in just to special event rentals that you would give to a bride um, looking for everything, looking for, you know, the right charger plate or the right chair? What would you, do you have any advice for those Mm. people? Well, I think being overwhelmed is natural right you're in a new zone you're in a new space unless you've done it or been a bridesmaid or a groomsman who's been drug along the you know like to to do the let's find some rentals um do a trip where you just look with no idea that i have to leave there with having achieved the simple thing the, the simple thing was that i went to the space and i looked at what they had because the stress 
of I have to pick this. I have, oh, and now I, oh, I don't know if it's in my budget. Just look, look at the prices, familiarize yourself with the costs, chat with the, you know, fabulous customer representatives that you have here to be like, what is a delivery cost? How much for setup? With, again, the idea, you do not need to book a single thing the first time. I don't even want you to think about that. Just look, because I think then the next time you come in, it's more familiar, right? Oh, I've been here. Oh, I was greeted at the front. You're no, there's no expectation. So then I can start to take that, that fabulous DIY area. They have, for everyone, I'll explain. They have some wonderful tables with white linens on them. And then they have walls of linens and chairs. And they have um, the charger plates. And when I just need to play or I'm really stuck, I just come and pull things. Start to pull. And don't again have that concept that I have to come up with a final design and have everything booked by the end of this hour that I have because it takes time. And so I think that that's really important for people because again, it hopefully takes the pressure away because when there's less pressure, it's fun because it's supposed to be fun getting married um, and, and, and doing this entire process. And then I think, yeah, start to play. And then maybe the third time I know I'm asking them to visit you three times. <laughs> We'd like um, to see you guys. Don't no, worry. but, but, but like, I think that's important. Then, then you're starting to fine tune, um, take lots of pictures, put combos together. You're not going to make a decision right in the moment and if you do oftentimes you'll change it because it it's it's a unless it's a gut reaction and there are times even myself as a designer i just know but there's times where i'm still open to possibilities um so that would be my biggest recommendation because it is overwhelming and i think the idea that it wouldn't be how many napkin styles do you have oh my goodness no but but it's so many so many so many and there's like the same color in different textures and different price ranges so i think that coming in and looking is great i think i've never suggested like i've never (laughs) honestly i think i'm learning so much for you and from you and i i love this but you are right kind of coming in and looking at these different aspects and touching and feeling and just getting the grasp on what we have and what Mm -hmm you may want and then kind of going home collecting your thoughts and coming back in and being like hey let's pull that white velvet down let's get that vera cutlery on there i think that that is that's gold and i think off the design aspect of that you know and if and i'll often just go to a store to be inspired i'm the worst person they're like oh he's just a (laughs) looky-loo but then i'll come back and i'll spend like it takes me time to commit um you know uh, like For instance, I love going to Crate and Barrel because I find it interesting to see well-made product, right? Um, Why do I do that? Because then I look at the cutlery and then when I'm, I'm like, okay, this is cool. Let's see if we can get it right? Which I, you guys do so well for us many, many times when I'm like, hi, so about that, I don't like anything that's currently here because I'm going for this vibe. How can you help? What what can we get to? How close right. can we go on that journey? Um, but I'm always looking around. I do the same thing when I'm like needing a bit of inspiration. I go to greenhouse hopping. Like there's nothing better than just walking around without the expectation that I need to buy anything. It's why anytime, and I, I do apologize about this slight side sidestep, oh. but when I'm designing um, spaces and we do a, a seasonal pop-up um, spring fall and Christmas it's not always about selling even though my team would be we need to sell the product and I know that it's about inspi- <laughs> that's all I tell the it's, girls it's, it's, it's about inspiring yes. because if you're inspired you will return mm-hmm. because if you feel that moment of glimmer of excitement you'll come back and you'll remember that it's it's so important in in what we do and what we want to create and so yeah just come and look I think your words are just like creating a visual for me (laughs) because when I go for home shopping decor, I'll go into Home Sense or Crate and Barrel and I'll see things and I'll go home and I'll know instantly what I want. I'll know, no, I saw that piece. There's nothing tops it. I need to go back and that's what I'm, I'm going to choose. So yeah, that would be my recommendation. Yeah, exactly. Jump on board, (laughs) come on in and look, then go home and come back in. (laughs) Um, So as we're concluding this episode, I think we talked a lot about tabletop decor and bringing everything together. Could we talk, do you have like a quick guide of what can kind of happen with tabletop decor? What what would be the three steps or what do you kind of have to say to kind of conclude this episode? Oh my goodness. Um, well, actually, I know there's so much, but no, no, no. You know what I'll do is I'll I'll talk a little bit about our proposal that we send our couples yes. because 
um, chapter one. So we actually do it as as chapters. Give me chills, Corey. It's like a whole experience. We, well, isn't and, it? And, and and to be very it's honest, we just discovered this, and and I've had some really amazing meetings with the team, and we're like, well, we want to tell people stories. Well, that starts in a storybook, right? So chapter one is about the maison scène, and for anyone who doesn't know, that's what is the world we create. Um, it's a theater term, and it's something that I really am inspired by often. And so we start with the vision, and that is simply a worded statement. So what is the vision for your day? Now this sounds weird. You're probably like, Corey, why can't I just pick a black linen and put a charger on? Because it's so much more than that. So what's the vision? So if yours, like I said, is the backyard rodeo party with the barbecue and all that, write that down. Three sentences, okay? That's your vision. Then next we go to color palette. And remember, we're not picking two colors. We're picking about six to eight colors that'll sort of play together. And there's so many amazing, like, Technology has moved so quickly to allow you to sort of create that spectrum. So pick those colors, lay them out, print it off. I want you to see it visually. And then finally, what I want you to do is create an inspiration board, be inspired. And what I would do with that is I would pick images that are not wedding related. I want you to pick images that evoke the mood and the feeling that you want. So if you you see an interior that just is like screaming your wedding, I want you to put that in. If you see a piece of art that is inspiring you, I want you to put that in. And those three pieces allow you the foundation to create anything. Because then you can look at your color spectrum and say, I'm going to go with a blush pink linen. Oh, I really, all my imagery has glass in it that's amazing. Well, then I want to make sure I have a glass charger and I want to make sure that the glassware is reflective because I'm seeing that repeated in my images. Oh, flowers. Oh my gosh. I have an English garden that needs to explode on the table. So you can see how those three things. So we have our vision statement and that can change as the process goes, but it helps you be stay rooted, your color palette, and then your be inspired page. And that should go with you every time you go out so that you constantly have it to reference and be inspired by and let it evolve and change. Um, but hopefully then when you're picking everything, when you pick the tablecloth, when you pick the charger, that centerpiece, and then those fine tuned stationary details, it will all come together magically. What a great process, Corey. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here and giving us all this, I feel like, useful information. I think couples are going to re-listen to this just over <laughs> and over and over again. I know I am. So thank you so much for being here. To leave off the um, podcast today, let's. I want to know what your favorite rentals are. What What, what is okay. your go-to rental? That walnut folding chair. Mm -hmm. But Especially if we need to do two sets of chairs. I like using it for a ceremony. Two sets of chairs, everyone. And yeah, I know two sets of chairs. I say it in every episode, always. <laughs> two because, sets of chairs. And the reason, but the, oh, I hate to, but the reason for that is because think about how much time you have. A lot of time, there's not enough time because you're going to want detail shots of that beautiful space that you've had de designed and then there's not enough time to do that. So, to, uh, thank you for saying that. <laughs> Sorry, like you I have to think about that. the logistics. I preach yeah, it. Like, okay. I preach it. Um, I do love the the clear glass charger with the wide gold that's new and I'm so excited um, wide gold it's a great way to pull gold in especially yep. if you love that as a metallic I think it elevates any space overall um, any table um, so I would highly recommend that so that's a huge one um, what else do I am I absolutely loving I do love a good harvest table I was going to say, you didn't mention the harvest table. Well, I, I just love the harvest table and the reason I love that is because it's communal I love wood tone because it warms up a space. It invites people. Um, and also it gives me as a designer a little extra room because it's 40 inches, 40 inches. rather than 30 inches, which is very, very, very small when you are trying to do a little bit of a Corey Christopher design. So um, <laughs> you I do, will only be able to sit on one side. Yeah. You can sit on one <laughs> side of the table because Corey's created an entire moss you explosion on the exactly. other um, because we do go crazy. Um, so I love that as well. And I'm, I'm a sucker for 
ghost chairs, whether it be clear smoke, the ones that we have here, or even just the black, I think there's a really fun and sleekness to them, but I like infusing them where it's unexpected. So if it's a little more like English garden, right? We are talking about that mm-hmm. explosion on the table. Well, imagine if it's, it, oh, I do like the white. How, this you is can't, unfair. You can't, I, know. I can't but pick, I do. But I do like talking about the ghost chairs because yeah. I do think they can go in a lot of different directions. Totally. They don't have to be modern. So they I love that you said that. They don't have it, to be modern. They are great fillers. Yes, and I think they're a great yeah. addition. So those would be just a few of my favorites, oh. but it's really hard to pick. Okay, well, thanks again, Corey. Um, and I welcome you back anytime. Well, thanks so much for having me. I hope everyone is feeling a little more inspiration today. I'm sure they are. Thanks for listening to the Special Event Rental Podcast. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to never miss an episode.